good to see you all here this morning, this wonderful day that we celebrate our resurrected Savior, Jesus. Amen? And uh, today, the title of my message is Risen. That's the theme of the day, right? Risen. So um, I'd like you to stand with me because I like to honor the Word by standing in the, as we read it this morning. Out of Romans chapter 8, verses 9 through 11, this is out of the Message Bible. It just, just struck me as I read it. So, But if God himself has taken up residence in your life, you can hardly be thinking more of yourself than of him. Anyone, of course, who has not welcomed this invisible but clearly present God, the Spirit of Christ, won't know what we're talking about. But for you who welcome him in, whom he dwells, even though you still experience all the limitations of sin, you yourself experience life on God's terms. It stands to reason, doesn't it, that if the alive and present God who raised Jesus from the dead moves into your life, he'll do the same thing in you that he did in Jesus, bringing you to alive to himself. When God lives and breathes in you, and he does, as surely as he did in Jesus, you are delivered from that dead life. With his spirit living in you, your body will be as alive as Christ. Your heavenly Father, Lord, as we come into your word today and we celebrate our resurrected Savior, I pray that as we talk and we, and we just listen from heaven, your, your words, what you've put, imparting to us, that you would truly raise each one of us up, God. That, Lord, that we would leave this place raised up, God, from being in your presence, from hearing your word today, from, from worshiping and giving and glorifying you, God. And, Lord, that you would truly raise each one of us up today. We give you praise, Father, in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen and amen. Well, happy Resurrection Sunday, amen. It's truly not about the bunny. It's about Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You know, but when I, when I re read this passage of Scripture, because I've been meditating on this for weeks now, and when I read this passage of Scripture, what came to me, and, and I, was, I don't even know where I was, but I just typed it into my phone because God just spoke it in me. Jesus rose from the dead to raise me up. Jesus rose from the dead to raise you up. Amen. He rose from the dead that we might have life. Amen. He rose so that we could live. He created access for God to God that has not been seen since Adam was on the earth. He created that we could come in, we could go out, we could go into the presence of God and not die. And God's intent today, I believe, is to raise us up, to give us life, amen? That's what he wants to do. And we could read in the Old Testament about how he came upon Moses, how he came upon David, how he came upon Samson, you know, but now he doesn't want to just come on a person here, a person there. He wants to come on all of us. He wants to raise us all up. God's intent is to raise you. Not to leave you, but to raise you up. And, and it's, it is so true. And I want you to know this. It's never his intent to put you down. It's always to raise you up. God is not about putting us down. He's about raising us up. He lifted me one day right here out of this alt at this altar. He lifted me out of the junk and the mud of this world. And he set me upon a rock, which was Jesus. Amen. He put me on solid ground, Jesus. And when this happens, there are things that begin to change in your life. And I I'm, not, I'm not talking about the stuff that I have to let go. You know, because people think, oh, when I come to Jesus, I got to let go I gotta, of this, and I got to let go of that. I got to stop doing this. No, when you come to Jesus, you want to just come to him as you are, amen? And the changes that happen is you're going to begin to start doing things that you were never able to do before. 
you're going to start being able to celebrate with God now what Jesus has done. And, and the stuff that you, you're doing that God doesn't like, that's not God's not fond of, that will naturally fall away. The more that you get close and receive what he's done for you, the more that you get into his presence, he, that stuff just falls away. So when you think about having to come to Jesus, don't think, well, I got to let go of this. And that's what I used to think. I used to think, well, I got to stop smoking. I got to stop drinking. Oh my gosh, I got to stop swearing. I got, you know what? I just came to Jesus. I just came to Jesus. And Jesus, he dusted me off. He cleaned me off. He, he, he put my feet on that rock and, and all that mud and that dirt just, just started washing away, Lucia. It just started flowing off of me to where pretty soon it's like, wow, I, I'm really, I feel pure. I feel like God is calling me to be holy. I feel like he was raising me up and not putting me down. And because of that, now, number one, you will think about knowing God. Think about knowing God. God. You know, you can experience a lot of stuff, but you want to experience his goodness in your life and his presence in you. Those are the things you really, once you get to know him, it's like, well, I want more of your love. I want more of your peace. I want to know your goodness. You're going to want to hear from heaven. You're going to want, you hear people say, oh, the Lord told me, and you're going to be like, God talks to you? Really? And it won't be in a bad way, because I know Delanda's had people say, you really think God talks to you? Absolutely. And when you come to Jesus and you desire him to know him better, Pastor Jesse, you want to hear from heaven. You want to hear what he's saying. You want to know what God is saying to you. Amen. And then the self-centeredness that we all walk in starts going away. And you start thinking of something bigger than yourself. You start thinking about God. You start thinking about God's plan for your life, about who he is and what he created you for. It's no longer me, myself, and I. It's, it's Jesus first. It's him, our resurrected Savior. And as I begin to think about God, and I begin to meditate on him, the things of the world just fell. They really did. I had no desire to do things. And as I read my word and I grew in the, in the word of God by studying and praying and seeking his faith, I realized I read things and I think, Oh my gosh, I do that. He doesn't like it. You know, like complaining. Anybody ever complain? <laughs> just, just a hint, God doesn't like complaining. Okay. He found complainers in the word of God. He opened up the ground and he swallowed them. He doesn't like complaining. <laughs> Amen? So I, I, I've learned, I'm, I'm not going to complain. I'm going to praise. Amen. I mean, you don't praise God because you got in a car accident, but you praise God that you walked away from it, amen? Right, Scott Allen? You praise God that when you're jamming down the freeway at 70 miles an hour and you told him your car, and you get up and you walk away. You don't praise him because you wrecked your car. You praise God because he let you live. That's what happened to him a month ago. That's where you praise him. You, you just start, things change. But the great thing is, you don't have to change to meet God. You just got to want to be with him. you got to start thinking about him. And after I met with God, he raised me to life. Now I live, amen? I can live. And when God raises you up because you've accepted Jesus and what he's done for you, there's nothing better. Nothing. Nothing. You might be sitting here today and you might have issues of life. You might have turmoil going on. You might have trials and tribulations and you say, oh, pastor, you don't know what, what's happening in my life. You don't know what's happening in mine either. But I know this. God's got me. God's always got me. And so I, I think about him. I think about his love for me. I think about his presence. It's incredible. And because now that I'm, I'm meditating, when I started meditating on God and wanting to know him, number two, I can experience life on God's terms. See, many of us have tried to experience God on our own terms. We, we try to make deals with him. God, if you help me here, I'll serve you. God, if you heal me, I'll do whatever you want. You know, we like them foxhole prayers, you know. God, you get me out of this situation, you know. I'm going to come. I'll go to church every Sunday. I might even throw in a few Wednesdays. 
If you just help me get through this time right now, God, because it's really hard and I need some help. And so we, we try to serve God on our own terms. We try to make deals with him instead of just going all in with him. You know, when we, when we were in this one country, Delon and I, we lived there for a little bit. We totally immersed ourselves. We totally went and we lived in a people where nobody spoke English. We lived in an area, there was no English speakers around. Because why? We just wanted to immerse. We wanted to learn their language. We wanted to connect with the people. We wanted to get to know them. And, and that's what we did. See, but I, we've done the same thing in the kingdom of God. We've immersed ourselves into the kingdom of God. And we're experiencing life on God's terms, not our own terms. So we're not trying to bargain with God. We're trying to, to be with God. We're trying to let him live through us. Everybody say alive. God's not trying to put you down. He's trying to lift you up. And so in his lifting up, this is how he did it. He said, Jesus took the punishment for all your sins so you don't have to. You don't have to take the punishment for your sin. Jesus took it all. Amen. You just have to receive what Jesus did. So if you're sitting here today and you're feeling guilty and you're feeling condemned, that's not Jesus. Jesus. Now, you may feel conviction of the Spirit. I know that when I've done things wrong, I feel conviction of the Holy Spirit, man, and I, I ask Him to forgive me right away, and I, I just do my best not to ever do it again. And then Jesus took your pain, disease, sickness to the cross so you can live. That's the plan. He took it all to the cross so you can live. And then, see, Jesus took it all so we can have peace. We can have peace in Jesus. You can have and experience peace in God like no other time in your life. It's in God that you experience peace. It's in Jesus and knowing that he is in control of your life, that you have peace. When, you know, because I've been walking with Jesus for a long time. I was raised in church, had my, my battles with the world. But in Jesus, Holly, I always experience peace. It keeps me going. Now, it doesn't mean that bad things don't happen. It just means that when I go through them, I know God's got it. I know he's in control because I, I just always go back to he loves me. He loves me. He loves you. So he's trying to raise you up and not put you down. He wants you to celebrate life and thrive and not just go through life trying to survive. He wants you to really live, amen? That's his intent, that's why Jesus came. So, and he also, because of Jesus and what he's done, we need to learn to forgive because he forgave all of our stuff. We, need, we have to forgive, amen? There might be, I, you know, I talk with a lot of people and sometimes I'm amazed that they're sitting in front of me. Sometimes amazed that they're even still breathing because of what they've gone through. And sometimes I just wanna, I wanna cry with them because of what they've gone through. The wrongs that have been done. But no matter what wrong has been done to us, we have to forgive. We have to forgive people, amen? We have to forgive. We have to let it go and say, okay, God. Because in order to receive the forgiveness, we have to, we receive God's forgiveness. He says, okay, now you have to forgive everybody. And sometimes that's very difficult because sometimes we've been very hurt. We've been very crushed. And God says, you have to forgive. You have to let it go. And in all the years I've been doing counseling, do you know what the hardest thing to forgive is? Self. To forgive yourself. You got to forgive yourself for the things. I remember when I, you know, I had backslid many years ago and I was doing my own thing. I was living life in my own terms and not God's terms. And when I came to him and I repented and, and I knew I was just cleansing, but I, I still felt inadequate. I still felt like, I messed up too much. But you, you can't mess up too much for God. He'll dust you off. He 
He'll put you on that right path. He loves you. And remember, his desire is to raise you up. Everybody say it. Up. He wants to raise you up. He doesn't want to leave you. So in, in, in just learning to experience life on God's terms and not my own, and knowing that he's lifting me up, I know that he is not putting me down, amen? He's not condemning me. He's not shaming me. He's not putting sickness on me. He's not putting guilt on me, okay? That's not God. That's not who God is. God's desire is to lift you up. He, will, he wants to call you holy. He wants to call you the beloved of God. He wants to declare you pure. He wants to say, you are the light of the world. He wants to declare you're the salt of the earth. You're the flavor of this world and if the the salt loses its flavor oh my gosh what a terrible world this would be he says that your righteousness he surrounds you psalms 5 12, with a shield of favor amen he gives you peace he loves you like no other person could ever love you this is what God is. He's not the one up there pounding on you. He's not the one creating problems. He's the one that wants to lift you up. Come on. He wants to lift you. <laughs> the kids get it. <laughs> and because he's raising us, number three, three, he will bring you to life the way he did Jesus. The way he did Jesus. This is what the scripture, I'm just pulling out of the scripture we just read. He will raise us up to life the way he did Jesus. After he raised Jesus from the dead, he raised him up into heaven. Everybody say heaven. heaven. And Jesus sat down at the right hand of the Father. He sat down with God. When we're done here on this earth and we have received Christ and what he's done, God will raise us up to sit on that throne with Jesus. Revelation chapter 3 verse 21 says this, To him who overcomes... I will grant to sit with me on my throne. As I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. So this is where the peace comes in. I have peace in my life because I know that when this body's done with me, I'm going to go there. I'm going to be with Jesus. I'm going to sit on the throne with God. Because I'm overcoming this world and I'm going to rise. Whether he comes for me or I go to him, either way, I'm going to sit in heaven with Jesus. Kids, when you have Jesus in your life, you're going to sit with Jesus one day on his throne. You're going to rule, you're going to reign with Jesus. Amen? That's the promise to us. Billy Graham once said, he said, and you probably heard this because of his resurrection and I say that because he said, one day you'll hear that Billy Graham has died. He said, don't believe it. On that day, I'll be more alive than ever. I've just changed addresses. Amen. 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 <laughs> one day, we will change addresses. And I want it to be with Jesus that my address changes to. Amen. Because your spirit and your soul is eternal beings. And you know, it's when we receive eternal life in Jesus, we receive eternal life to rule and reign with him. But when we don't receive it, we will not go there to be with him. And I think you all understand what that means. But the Lord, in his wisdom, he took time to teach us how to pray. It's called the Lord's Prayer. And, and in the Lord's Prayer, it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen? We all know. <laughs> Even a non-believer knows the Lord's Prayer. It's just like it's out there. We all know the Lord's Prayer. But what, what I'm telling you this is you don't have to wait to get there 
to experience eternal life here. Because eternal life is relationship with God. Eternal life is knowing God the Father and the Son, Jesus. And so we can do that now. And we can experience heaven here on earth. We can experience the love of God. Delanda, one time she said, I just want to, I want to know you love me. I want to experience your love. And, and God said, look around. And she began to look around and she began to see it in people. See, when the love of God is in us, God will just pour it out through us, amen? And, and we can just receive from each other the love of God because if it's in you, it's going to come out of you. The joy, God will pour into you joy in Christ. I've experienced, you know what? I have never laughed so hard except in Jesus. In Jesus. God has put so much joy in my life that I, I can laugh. And you know what? I laugh loud, too. And then the peace, oh my gosh. He pours in peace to you that the world doesn't understand. The world doesn't get it. The world says, how can you just stand there? How can you not be a wreck? Well, I have this peace. Well, where did you get that peace from? Jesus. Jesus, I have peace. I have this peace in me. And then the kindness. He just pours kindness into you. The Lord is kind. He, he's so kind to us. He didn't give us what we deserved, amen? He's not out there trying to put us down. He's trying to lift us. Kids, come on now. He's trying to lift us up. So in the gentleness, God is gentle with us. And he puts gentleness inside of us that we can be gentle with each other. And God is faithful. He is so faithful, amen? And he, amen. he pours it into you. Faithfulness. You know, when it comes to loyalty and faithfulness, I think of my mom. You know, my mom was in this church 40, 41 years, at least faithful. I look at Bob and Lillian back there, faithful. I look at my sister Shirley, faithful. Faithful men and women of God that have been so faithful to the kingdom of God for such a long time. Been faithful to the house of the Lord. Been faithful to give and to love and to be gentle, to be kind. And, and, and out of all that, they, they've walked in patience. They've been patient with people. They've been patient with the Lord. And, and God will give you this patience. He'll give you the patience with, with people. I used to... You know, we used to live way out in the countryside, Delon and I. It was like 22 miles from door to door to get to church. And so we had to leave early, you know, because me, for me to be on time, I have to be 15, 10 minutes early to be on time. That's on time to me. So, you know, when we lived out there, I, it took me a half hour to get here. And, and Delonda, when, you know, when we were young and we had the babies and, and the little girls and Carly, and, and she's trying to get them ready and she's trying to make them breakfast and, and she's trying to, you know, get everything together so we could come. And, and, and then I would yell at her all the way here. Why we got to be late? Man, I hate going in late. You know how I hate being late. And I would chew her out and everything. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me one day. He said, why don't you be part of the solution instead of the problem? And, and he, he put patience in me. So I learned how to do Carly's hair and Krista's hair. I'd, get, I'd brush it, I'd crimp it, you know. They always, they wore, they, you know, they wore frilly dresses to church and fur coats. And, you know, they dressed to the hilt to come to church. And so I got them ready every Sunday. And, and then I'd make breakfast, you know, because I'm the kind of guy I would... Pastor Jesse, because I'd be so tired, I'd sleep until about 15 minutes before we had to leave. And, and I'd, I'd go in, and I'd shave and shower, and be like, all right, let's go. And Delon would be looking at me like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> patience, patience, patience. Patience goes a long ways, amen, to loving people. And goodness, the goodness of God. God is so good, amen? God is good, because he wants to lift you Oh, you guys are awake. Come on. It's 1130. God wants to lift you. His goodness. And then because he's so good, he gives you self-control. 
He gave, he gave me self-control. He gave me self-control, Mary. So now I, I don't, I, you know, there's a season where self-control stops you from doing what you were doing. You really have to walk in that self-control to, to not do those things that you were doing. Because you know, I don't, want to go, I don't want to do those things anymore. Because I'm getting closer to God. I'm thinking about Him. I want to live on His terms. So I'm not wanting to do things the way I used to. So He gives me self-control. So I, I have that control over it. But you know, the more that, that self-control has grown, grown in me, those things just fade away. They're not a part of me. I don't, I'm not fighting against it. Now, I've learned to just come to Jesus and rest in Him, to live in His terms, so that, that He just fills me with life. And He raises me. <laughs> it's like a, <laughs> what's it, Bugs Bunny, you know, cartoon. <laughs> And he gives us healing. He's poured out healing. You know, and you say, well, I'm, I'm sick. Well, be healed in the name of Jesus. And I don't mean that. Flip. I mean it. Be healed in the name of Jesus. That lady right back there came in in a wheelchair a couple months ago. Right? Stand up. Stand up. It's okay. Just stand up. I'm not going to make you talk. Just stand up. Now, when she came in... She came in in a wheelchair, and she couldn't stand up. And we, were, we had a, a healing line, and I just said, in the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus, be healed. That's all we did. And then at the end of the service, I said, everybody stand. And she stood up. And I'm standing here, and I'm watching you, and I'm thinking, I thought she couldn't stand. And then she walked out. So I go to Joe and go, hey, where's the lady? He said, I don't know. She walked away. He's standing there with the chair. She comes back and she says, you know what happened to me today, Pastor? The Lord woke my leg up. The Lord woke her leg up. Let it be complete in you today in the name of Jesus. Let it just be total, completely, fully, completely healed. Let there be no more effects of what was wrong, but that today God is raising you healing. And then he gives you forgiveness. Oh my gosh, the forgiveness. I already talked about forgiveness, but he does. He gave me forgiveness. I'm forgiven. And listen, he does not give you condemnation because he's trying to lift you so he doesn't want to put you down. He's not wanting to condemn you for what you've done in the past. He's not wanting to condemn you for where you are today. He's wanting to lift you because in the kingdom of God, there's no guilt. Okay? There's no shame. People, you know, it's kind of like an old saying from the older generation to say, shame on you. And I always laugh at them. I said, no. And they look at me crazy like, what do you mean, no? I said, I don't receive shame. I'm sorry. I don't receive shame. It, I may do things wrong, I may not always be right, but I'm not going to walk in shame, amen? Because I'm not going to receive what Jesus set me free from, amen? You can't condemn me because he set me free from condemnation. He set me free from all guilt and shame and condemnation, so now I'm free, amen? amen. You're free in Jesus if you want to be. You don't have to walk in all that because this is why he came to raise you. Oh. Wow! God's desire is to raise you. And with his spirit living in you, your body shall be as alive as Jesus is alive. Amen? Amen? Yeah. This is what this day is all about. God will raise you and give you new life. Amen? In, in, is God... I'm going to ask the worship team to come back right now. Is God who you've been thinking about? Have you been meditating about God? Are you thinking all about your issues? Thinking about that next dollar? Thinking about that next drink? 
some of the ladies at church were at, at this one place, and, and then they realized there's a, a store there, and it has a for lease sign on it. And it's a marijuana store in Corona here. I'm like, oh my gosh. The guy was, you know, um, had a full tactical vest on with clips and guns and everything to protect the store. So, you know, there's, there's a lot... Because it's been made legal, there's a lot of people think, well, it's okay. Why would you want to go back to stuff that God set you free from, amen? amen? Are you thinking about God? Is he something that when you leave this place, because, I mean, we're all thinking about God right now. But when you leave, and tomorrow, and you get up, are you going to be thinking about him? When you get up on Tuesday, or when you get off work on Wednesday, are you thinking about Oh, I'm going to go be with my family. I'm going to go be with my family. We're going to go worship the Lord tonight. Are you thinking about God? Are you thinking about God on Thursday? Are you thinking about God on Friday? Or, or do you only think about God on Sunday morning? When he's not raising you up, but you're forcing yourself up. Oh, I got to go to church. I never have to go to church. <laughs> I always want to be here. <laughs> he, he has raised me. Have you been living your life on your own terms? Have you been doing things your way and just coming to God once in a while? Are you living your life on God's terms? Are you looking for how he would do things, how he would handle things? Or is it you're just going to live on your terms and come to church once in a while? Do you today, this is the all-important question right here, do you today need to be raised up the way that Jesus was raised up. The scripture we read at the beginning says, when God lives and breathes in you, and he does as surely as he did in Jesus, you are delivered from that dead life. With his spirit living in you, your body will be as alive as Christ. Do you need to be raised up today? Do you need to be delivered from dead life and raised up into new life today? Because the Spirit of God is here to do that. If you're feeling something in your spirit right now, if you're feeling like, oh man, that's the Holy Spirit right now. Because I know that God doesn't want anybody here leaving feeling down because he wants to raise you let's pray praise you father lord we thank you for the love that you have for each one of us here today we thank you father god that you didn't come to put us down you didn't come to condemn us and put us in shame and guilt to put us in bondage to this world but you came to lift us up and Father, I pray now that by the Holy Spirit you speak to every person here. You speak to our hearts. And that today would be somebody's resurrection. That Lord, today I believe you're going to raise somebody up from that dead life in the new life in Jesus. If you're here today and you say, Pastor Ron, I need to be raised up today. I need to, to be raised up in God. I'm tired of being put down. I'm, I need to raise up. I'm tired of what I've been going through. I'm tired of the life I've been living. I want to be raised up in God today. I want to be raised up in Jesus today. If that's you today, I want you to just stand up to your feet right now. Stand to your feet. You say, I want to be raised up. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet. Amen. Amen. Want to be raised up. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Be raised up. And I'm going to ask you, if you just come down here with me right now, you want to be raised up, just come down here with me. You're standing. Just come on. It won't hurt. The Holy Spirit's not going to put you down. He's going to raise you up. He's here to raise you up. Why don't we all stand and just give the Lord a hand as they come this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, it's okay. Yeah, you want to be raised up. I'm going to ask altar workers to come and stand with them right now. Nobody stands alone today. We're together in this. Jesus is raising us up. Hallelujah. All, you, all our kids are here today. Praise God. Come, come on. Pastor C, come on. Get behind these kids. Cardi, come on. Get behind them. Get behind them. Get behind all these children over here. Hey, hallelujah. Praise God. I want you to just repeat this prayer after me. Everybody, let's say it together. Amen. Let's say it all together. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for Jesus. Jesus. I confess you today. Be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. Free me today. Release me from guilt. Release me from shame. Release me from condemnation. I want to be raised up. Jesus. Live in me. I will serve you on your terms. Be alive in me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand today. We're going to sing this song. It was the first song we sang. So I'm going to ask, just stand with us. Just come to the front. Let's just worship the Lord together for one song. Okay, let's just come together in unity, in his spirit. And, and let's sing. We're going to sing Risen Again. Alive. Uh, alive. Alive. Because we are what? We're alive. So just come and, and let's be alive today. Shake these people's hand. Bless them today in the name of Jesus. Pray over them, you that are behind them, and just be with them today. Go ahead, Nidia. It's nice. Let your love be the shining light. You're breaking chains that were holding me. You set your sun down to set me free. And everything of this world will fade. I'm pressing on till I see your face. And I will live that you will be done. And I won't stop till your kingdom comes. See you with me cause you.
that we are alive in you, Jesus. And we celebrate your resurrected life because you were raised up to raise us up. up. And so, Jesus, we receive that raising today. We receive that life today. And, Lord, as we go our way today, Lord, let us remember you tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Lord, let us begin to live on your terms. That, Lord, that we're no longer trying to make a deal with you and we're no longer trying to serve you on our own terms. But, Lord, we want you to be alive in each one of us. Lord, you've renewed our strength. Okay? A covering of blessing over the people of God. I pray healing over them. I pray protection over them. I pray just the blessing of God go with them. And Lord, that we would continue to be the salt and the light of this earth. And we thank you for what you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, you don't got to go, but you can fellowship. There's food out there. Say hi to somebody. Connect with somebody today. There's food in room four if you need it. God bless you. Happy Resurrected Day.